So I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Rockford College in 2013. It only took me 40 years to get <laughs> to my bachelor's degree, but I finally did it. And um, so they told, one of the things they told me to do is to build my resume. And the way to do that is to go after the, the national juried shows. So my very first year, I, I just skipped right over that and went to international. <laughs> and I, the very first year, I got my first international award from the International Garden Photographers, Garden Photographer of the Year in England. And it was, it was a highly commended award, and I was so thrilled to get that. So that's kind of where I got started with floral photography, because that's probably at least 50% of the work that I do is florals, and you're probably going to get tired of looking at all the flowers <laughs> I'm going to show you, because I kind of divided it up. So the first part is about my flowers, which you'll probably enjoy after this winter. You'll enjoy seeing some color. And then I get into some other things. And so, uh, and so that was my first award. Then I went on to win four more. <laughs> so a couple of times I've gotten in, you, if you get one of the first three spots, they will put you on this t uh, special tour and then you're exhibited all over Europe. And I've done that twice. This year I got a commended award and that's what you're seeing right there. This is the award that I got this year. So I'm starting off with that first. And I'm gonna show you how I did this one. This was, um, is anybody familiar with um, Al's Auto Body and Arboretum? Okay, I took this hosta photo and I sent it to him and I said, hey, I just made you famous. <laughs> One of your hostas got in there. So what, this was the abstract category. They have about 10 categories and, and so this is how I did that. I, I called it Indian corn hosta. This is a photo of a Tiffany lamp that I took a photo at in, I think it was in Cincinnati. I went to a special exhibit for Tiffany. And I took a picture of that and I underlaid it with the hosta. I'll go back so you can see. And that's why it looks the way it does. But this was, this was last year. I got a third place and so this one was on the tour. And what I did was I used a, a tool in Photoshop and I, it's a, a black and white photo over a color photo and I stretched it like where it loops down, I just took the, um, the mouse and I was able to stretch it and then overlaid it with the, the black and white. And it was interesting how that happened because it was one that I just, as I was entering, because every year I pour over all my pictures that I've taken and I figure out which ones I want to enter. And that one, I'm like, oh, that looks good. I think I'll enter that one. And that was the one they picked. So <laughs> you never know. I mean, it's hard to... I enter a lot of shows and it's hard to, to try to decide what is the judge going to really look for, you know, so. But I'm really known for my flowers against black and I've taken zillions and zillions of photos of flowers and so I really feel like I've come to know them intimately. And I have a few favorites. The parrot tulip has got the most personality of all flowers. I love parrot tulips. So in the spring I'm so excited to go out and shoot this one was one that I actually grew myself, and that was my highest selling one so far, because a guy from Chicago, a banker from Chicago, bought that from me. I have my work at a gallery in Galena, Illinois, and I'd like to get into some more galleries, but that's where my work is right now. And, um, oh, that one did get put in there. It's a, that's a, a lily that I took at the Rotary Garden. I spend a lot of time at the Rotary Garden. I know all the gardens. I, I belong to, the uh, American Horticulture Society. So for $50 a year, my husband and I can get into any garden all over the country that have, it's a reciprocal program. And so, um, but I spend, the Rotary Garden is the closest one to my house, so I spend the most time there. This one was actually taken at the Borner um, Gardens in Milwaukee. And that, this one is a peony tulip, actually. I, this was the only, this is the only one that I actually have hanging in my own ho home. This one was one I grew, too. I believe that one's a painty one. And I, one of the things that I do is I spend a lot of time in post-production. So I edit my photos extensively in Photoshop to get them just the way I want them to look and bring out the, the best that they can be. So I have a lot of black 
Uh, and this is how I do the black backgrounds. People think that I do it in a studio, and I don't. I have a black card that I just hold behind the, the flower. And I have a special lens, and the lens kind of zooms in, so I'm like, sometimes it's really hard. It's like <laughs> almost trying to get, get it just right. But I'm always, whenever I go to a garden, I have two cameras on my person. I, I carry one around my neck, and I have another one. One for, because um, it's, it's really a hassle to have to take the lens on and off all the time. So if I want to have a wide angle, I have a camera for that. But if I want to do the close-ups, I have another camera for that. And now they're coming out with lighter and better cameras all the time, like somebody mentioned mirrorless. And I joke with my friends all the time, and I tell them, I'm never going to get one of those mirrorless cameras because those heavy cameras that I carried at the, at the garden is what's going to keep me in shape as I age. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the, the satiny texture. Like this, this one here is a peony tulip, so you'll, you'll get tired of looking at all my tulips there. <laughs> This one actually I, I brought along. If anybody wants to take a look at this, is what I how I print my photos on uh, on black. Uh, there's a special lab in California that prints them on metal. It's an aluminum, and then you have the the hook here to hang them, and it floats against it floats against the wall. Um, and this one is a semi gloss. Most of the time when you see photos printed on metal, they're a high gloss. This one is a semi-gloss, so it cuts down a little bit of the glare, but yet you still get all of the detail. So this one was one that got damaged in transit, so they had to replace it. So it's one that I bring along because anybody can pass it around or whatever. Because, yeah, yeah. So that's why I just use it, so you kind of get a feel for what, what the texture is like. Where do you have them printed? It's called Bay Photo in California. Yeah. There's only a couple labs that I know of that actually do the semi-gloss. This one's a Dahlia. That one, um, I, this one I just took recently when I was doing a garden tour out east. That one, I, that's a poppy. I love the texture. I showed that to my husband and he said, is that a real flower? And I said, yeah. And he said, it looks like crumpled paper. Yes. Yeah. And I don't normally... I don't normally shoot yellow against black because I just don't think it translates that well. This one seems to work fine because it's got a lot of texture. But I, I normally don't photograph yellow against the black very much. Um, but I, because I've taken so many photos of flowers, I feel like I really do know them intimately. And number one, the one I showed you before was um, a tulip, which is the most personality. but Peonies are the most romantic flowers, in my opinion. I love peonies. And there actually is a photo, a, a flower, that I do not like to shoot, <laughs> and that is the azalea. I have yet to take a good picture of an azalea, in my opinion. So just because I shoot flowers all the time, I know which ones are more photogenic than others. And this one I just took recently. Um, when they, we had all that frost, remember the horror frost that we had? Oh my gosh, that's like walking in a, a wonderland when it's horror frost like that. That's like Disneyland for a photographer like me. And so it, it really contrasts well against the black when you've got that frost on there. Is anybody familiar with Doug's Garden in Delavan? It's called Stop and Smell the Roses. Julie's been there because <laughs> she told she found out about it from me. There's a guy up there named Doug Ammon, and he's 80 years old, and he, he has this rose garden that was a tribute to his late wife, and he spends up to 14 hours a day caring for his roses, and they're all in these really huge pots like this, and every year at the end of the season, he puts them in his, in his barn, and then every spring he brings them out, and he has help doing that, and he is the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. He just talks a leg off you when you go up there. He's so awesome, and he just has a sign out, it's on County O, I think it is, and it's called Stop and Smell the Roses, and it, he doesn't charge anything to get in. He loves customers coming in, people that just come, stop by, you know, and he has bus trips, and he told me a story one time that I'll never forget. He said he had a bus trip of some older folks come in one time, and he said the lady, you know, and, and he showed him around, and, and then a few days later he got an email 
from a woman and she said, you know, that's the first time that I've ever felt joy since my husband died. And he said, that's why he does it. And he's so nice. I mean, I told him, I hope you live to be past 100 because he's such a great guy. And because of him now, I've joined the um, American Rose Society. And so I'm going to start entering photo competitions in the Rose Society now. So, But this is one of his roses. I want to at least put one of his roses in because his roses are so beautiful. He handpicks all the little bugs off. And he's up there. He's out there at like 6.30 in the morning starts. How many roses do you 400. He says he has over 400, so yeah, he's an awesome, so I would recommend going up there sometime because he is an awesome guy. Everybody that I've ever taken there just loves him. This one was taken in Ohio, and I'm trying, oh, this was a, actually a pansy, a side view of a pansy. Yeah, more frost. That's actually an older one that I've done. But somebody told me, oh, I really like that one. I called it, this one I call herbs and ices. <laughs> <laughs> and this one was taken, this one was taken right next to Lake Louise in, in uh, the Canadian Rockies, you know, the, one of the most iconic mountain ranges ever. And everybody's out there, what I've noticed is everybody's out shooting like this, you know, and I'm like looking down and <laughs> finding all these gems that everybody else is missing, you know. Oh, this was taken at, um, in Oshkosh, there's a, the Payne Art Museum, or if you're familiar with that, they have some beautiful grounds. It's like an, it's an, an old mansion. And I went up there. I've been up there a few times, and that's where I took this one. And so then I get bored taking just regular, plain pictures of flowers all the time, so I thought I'd get a little creative. So Julie actually owns this one. And the, re, the way I did it was there's these brushes that you can stamp on and they have um, water, um, water brushes. And so what you do is you take your eyedropper tool and you, you can like pick a color, any color, at a, a dot of any spot on the, on the flower and then it will replicate that color. So then you can stamp these, these splash brushes, brushes on there. And that one is probably one of my most popular photos. What kind of flower is that? That's a Cosmos. They have a lot of beautiful Cosmos at um, the Rotary Garden. I have grown some of my own, too. This one I actually just did recently, and um, I'm, I keep experimenting and coming up with new ideas in Photoshop. And so this was a, um, I'm trying to think what's the name of it. It's that, um, it's, it's for shade gardening. And it was in, um, I went in Pennsylvania. There's Longwood Gardens out there, and they have this beautiful conservatory. And I was in there, and I found this beautiful plant. And so I added some color in the background, like I did with the first picture I showed you. And then I did some tweaking in Photoshop. And it actually, if you look at it closely, you might want to see it later, it looks almost like a tapestry, because it looks like threads. And I thought that was kind of a unique. I'm going to play with that one a little bit more, that technique. That was taken at the Rotary Gardens. Okay. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This was taken at Anderson Gardens. In, in, and you know, I've, I talked to somebody that I know that lives in Newfoundland, and she said that they have dragonflies like that, but they won't sit very long. And I'm like, these dragonflies are so cooperative with me. I had one sitting in a bush in front of my house one day, and it was there half the day. And I'm like, they just really must really like to have their photo taken. <laughs> and it's really hard to get the, the focus just right. And because he sat there so long, I was able to adjust my camera with a lot of different settings to get to really nail the focus on that. And I like that is that's actually an awesome one because it's got a lot of color. And this is a this is a peony, which I adjusted in 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 Photoshop and I, this was an actually one that I took quite a few years. I called this one, this one was shown at the Beloit Art Center and I call this one um, Rainbow Sherbert. <laughs> but see then I, then now I started working with textures and so I try so many different things to just really make it more of an art piece as opposed to just a photo of a flower, you know.
This one I took recently, um, and then I put textures on. Textures are like, like if you have a really rough sidewalk or something and you take a picture of that and then you put it over top and it has like a nice texture and it almost looks, it gives it that painterly feel. And then I have special plugins that I put with my Photoshop. It's like a third party thing and it, and it will, it will um, manipulate the pixels. And so this was just a, a photo of a bunch of daisies and then I put some some texture and some color to it and I adjusted it. I, I spend a lot of time really honing my skills with Photoshop and that's where the artist in me comes out because that is, is a, a skill in itself, just learning how to really make the program. And sometimes people, people are, they think that this is easy. They think the computer does all the work and I'm like, no way. <laughs> because you're always dealing with crashes and you're always dealing when they update things, they, it, it takes a while to get the bugs worked out and there's just like, sometimes you just want to pull your hair out, you know? And it's trying to get this computer to work for you instead of just painting. And I tell people, sometimes I feel like I could paint faster. But I really like the look of some of the stuff that I'm doing. And I'm just used to it. I, although I do spend so many hours in front of a computer every day that I'm starting to feel like I need to get back into just doing some more traditional techniques and I've started doing that again this year. This is one of my few black and whites. Now this is actually a Cosmos, but it's two Cosmos touching each other. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I, that one was accepted in a, to a show um, recently. So then I really started to step out of my box and started using flowers with people. And the way I learned Photoshop is I found a guy online that does a whole course in Photoshop. So I signed up for his class and because of that class, I'm friends with a lot of people that are also taking the class and so now I have friends all over the world that I talk to every day online. And now I'm starting to meet some, so because as I travel along I find people that I know from this group and then we meet and get together and have meetups, it's so much fun. So it's really, this career has really opened a lot of doors for me and so now I, in the future I'll be traveling even more and I'm working on getting um, into some of the gardens to do garden workshops, garden photography workshops now. And so this, if you look at her collar, I took that photo in March at the Rotary Garden and it was just a dried up leaf. <laughs> <laughs> but I blended it with her and it turned out beautiful. So you just never know and sometimes it's just fun to play because if you get to a point where you're not, you don't know what to do next, you just take two completely different images and put them together and you'd be surprised at what you can find, what you can come up with. And then you can erase areas or enhance areas. There's all, it's just unlimited. And I'm the kind of personality that likes a lot of variety so it's perfect for me. This was actually shown in uh, one of the photos that they published in the, the Beloit Daily News one time before I, and I'm right, trying to remember, it was a show or something that I had. Oh, it was, wasn't it when the first time I was a judge last year, I think they published it, Jerry, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, so I just, see, in this group that I'm in, that I, where I'm learning the Photoshop, um, the guy that runs it, he has 16,000 students worldwide, and he has a guy that's in Arizona who does model photography and he will purchase the rights to some of his images so that we can use them in our work and so that this is one of his models. So I have 100% I have commercial rights to use it. I don't need to you know, give him credit or anything, it's just that it's my model photo to work with. So I just um, went a little crazy in, on that one there. And so this was actually, the bottom of her dress is one of my flowers. So now I blended it <laughs> and I put the flower in her hair. <laughs> and here's another version of her. Yeah, this is called the dispersion technique. It's a special technique in Photoshop that I was learning how to do. And I love, if you can tell, I love red. Red is like so vibrant. Oh, this one I just, this one I just recently did. And in my group, there's a woman uh, that just recently died. We became friends and she had been battling cancer for 28 years and she just died last week and she lived in Holland 
And she was one of the top students in this group. And I did this as a tribute to her because she had textures that she, that she donated. And I started the background with some of her textures, and then I um, used a lot of the images. Now, the, the guy that's taught me Photoshop, he took that photo of the, the model, and I just worked at it. I worked at it all week till I got it just the way I wanted it, and then I put it on and said this was a tribute to her, and everybody really loved it, so I really like it too. And that one's the one I did a while ago. Yeah, just put the wings on. This is, a, this is a recent one that I did. Actually, the wings are made out of a, a hibiscus flower. You know, because every, every night they close up, and it was starting to close, and I took a picture of the hibiscus, because I bought one myself, and it's in my garden, and I took it, and so then I manipulated it, and I put the um, crown thing on her head. I put the dove in her hand, because that's a symbol of Aphrodite, and that's what I named it, is Aphrodite. And I'm really anxious to get this one printed. I really, I want to, I entered it into a competition a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to hear any day whether I got in or not, so fingers crossed. Another one. Now, this was the same hibiscus flower right there, but I just made it so light that it looks sheer. I call this one Creating Magic. This one was taken at, in 2017. When I go to a photography convention every year, put on by Brooke Shaden. She's like a, a, a conceptual uh, photographer. And there was this great uh, lake there with this beautiful tree in the background. And it just happened to be there. And, and she sent one of the models out. And she was in this boat for the longest time doing all these poses and everything. And I just happened to capture her right there. So. And then the guy that does the, the commercially available, the, the one I told you about in Arizona, I was going to be near that area last year when we had our convention. Our last convention was in um, Joshua Tree, California. And he's in Phoenix. And I, I contacted him and I said, hey, I'm going to be in your area. Can we do a model shoot together? Because I know that he does that. So he, uh, he said, sure. So I went over and he got a couple of models and we spent the day in the studio and it was really fun to be doing something different than I normally do. And so this gal was great. She, she has this whole 1940s style going on and she, is, she was an amazing model. It's, and when you're working with professional models, it's so much fun because they know what they're doing. They just do the poses. You don't even have to tell them anything. They just do it. And it just, it was really a lot of fun. Oh, I think, well, the, I paid extra because I, Stevie, she's also a makeup artist, so the other gal that came in, she did both of their makeups for me, and that was like $150 for the makeup. And I think it was maybe $200 or something I paid for the session. So, yeah, for me, it's a tax write-off, so, <laughs> so I don't mind. Okay, this is my friend Jenny. Jenny, Jerry knows Jenny. Jenny's, Jenny's exhibiting right now at BAC down in... in uh, in Beloit and she's a watercolor artist and this is the studio 317 studio in Rockford and her and I are good friends and so she's wearing a dress that I made when I was in fashion design school it's black velvet and it's got these buckles in the front and we said let's do a shoot because they, they have this really neat 1960s furniture so I put that together and she loved it so now she has that on her as her um, photo on on Facebook so, yeah. And this one I'm so excited about because this was taken at the same lake, the Red Lake, where the, the Red Lady was. This one um, is going to be exhibited in New York City in April. So it's the first time I got into New York City. I'm so excited. So I'm planning to go there for the opening because it's my first time in New York. So, yeah. And then I, the day that I took that, Here's another version. And I put that on Facebook right away because I had a texture with me. So I'm like, oh, this looks better. It looks kind of makes it look so dreary and rainy. And so I put it on. And one of my friends said, I, I'm going to buy that from you. So I sold it before I even got home. And so, and, and on the side of the boat, it said, it said L-O-W-E. 
And she said, can you change that to L-O-V-E? And I said, sure, no problem. <laughs> so she loves it. So she got that printed on canvas. And this one was shown a couple years ago in Beloit at the, at the Beloit College. They have a, every year they have a show there, and this one got in. And this is more of the conceptual stuff, you know, the weird, creepy stuff. This is actually my great niece. And I loved her hair flowing out, and then that's another picture of her, and I wanted it to look creepy. And, and, and the neat thing about doing conceptual stuff is this is the kind of stuff that the big time galleries like. They like, they could look at flowers all day and just ignore me, but they like stuff that they're not looking for pretty. They're looking for stuff that's weird. And so I'm like, I'll play that game sometimes. So um, this has been in a couple of shows. It was in Dubuque, Iowa for a while too. It's, so this one is, gets their more, this kind of thing gets the big gallery's attention as opposed to the, just the flowers usually. Yeah, this is another one I just recently entered. I call this epic mermaid something. Do you uh, do the, the uh, architectural photography? Of this one? Well, of either the, the Oh, no, those, th there's, a, there's a, um, a website called Pixabay, and there's photos in there that are commercially available for anyone that is free. So I go in there and I scout through pictures sometimes. Sometimes, a lot of times I use my own work, but sometimes I need something. I'm looking for just the right thing to add, and I'll go into those the free sites. But I, I'm really, as a photographer myself, I'm really c careful about whose work I'm using because if, it, if I don't have commercial rights, I won't use it. Can you talk about how you made that and what you did? I took, okay, well I had the background was just this empty building and then I had the picture of her and I cut it out. You know, you have to, it's really, sometimes it's tricky to, get, to extract those images because you have to fine tune it and go in there and erase and everything. So once I had her cut out, then it's easy to just plop her in anywhere. And then you can twist it or turn it, make it bigger or smaller and in Photoshop. And then um, I just superimposed, you know, because you can change the opacity. I put her in the corner and then there's like this creepy doll behind there. And then I put, I purposely put in a dead bird and the lily there. And then her, uh, because I wanted it to, what my rendition of the story is, I wanted it to look like it was a girl that had died in this building in a fire or something. And that's why it's all dilapidated and stuff. So that was my, but, it's, but I like it because it's open to interpretation. You can look at this picture and find all these things and then create your own story about it, you know? And so um, the birds, what I did was I put the birds in and that was like a stamp like when I showed you the splashy flower. It was just a stamp, but then you can blur it. There's another setting in Photoshop where it will blur it out so that it looks like they're in motion. So that's how I constructed it, yeah. How long did that take you? Oh, sometimes, you know, I get to a dead end and then I'll just take a few hours to take a break and I'll come back to it. Like the one I showed you of my, the tribute to my friend. I worked on that all week. So it took me about five or six days and I would just come back a little at night. It, I work really late at night because I don't have any other job besides this job so I'm a, I'm a natural night owl so I'll be up till two o'clock in the morning usually almost every night so I'll work on whenever all the day's work is done that I need to get done that's my time the phone doesn't ring I, that's my time to really focus on my art so I worked on that several nights in a row just kept coming back to it and tweaking this and tweaking that and that had a lot of different layers sometimes there's lots and lots of layers like this one you, there, I put a little treasure chest there and a seashell on the rock that wasn't there and I added I added the lightning in the background this was actually the water was from a an original painting because apparently I've always been told that if a if an artist has been dead for 70 years their work is public domain and you can use it in anything you want now an attorney just told me, oh, they changed it to 80 years now. I'm like, well, they don't tell you this, you know. <laughs> but no, actually the tail, I put it, um, it was another person in a, in a, it was from a painting too, the lady was from a painting. But I put the tail on her, and the tail actually, I, I took myself, it was, uh, there's a place called the Fairy Festival, the, it's called the Festivals of Fairies or something in Elgin, Illinois, they put it on every year. And there was, a, there was a mermaid there one year, and she was in a pool, and she had the tail on, you know, and I was taking pictures of the tail, and, and it was perfect for this one. 
And this one I took, I took the picture of this gal in, when I was at the photography convention, my first photography convention, it was in, in uh, Colorado Springs. And then I went to the um, Ohio State Reformatory, which is where the Shawshank Redemption movie was filmed, and it's open to the public. And to me, that was like Disneyland, because it was like all these beautiful things that were all crumbling paint, and it was kind of eerie, too. But I, was, I had a ball in there, just shooting a zillion pictures. And this one was from one of the scenes where the guy hung himself. I don't know if you're familiar with the film, but they kept it like they did in the movie. And so I just put her on that bed and made it tell a story. Because that's what they tell me about, you know, that's what really gets the attention of people when they want, to, when they're putting things into a galley. They want something that tells a story. So I thought this one fit the bill really well. Oh, and this one too. <laughs> yeah, this one was, I recently took, I went to an insane asylum that was, that was abandoned. And, uh, <laughs> She, the picture I took this year at our photography convention in, in Joshua Tree, and we, she was doing, the, the lady that was running it, she was doing it with um, this powder, and she would, it, like, she would put all this flour on her hair, and then she would flip her hair back, and you'd get this big wave of flour. And so she was doing, she was laying on the ground, all curled up like that, so I shot her, and then I put her into the scene, because they had one room in the Sassane Asylum, it was in West Virginia, and I just put her on there. And I put it on Facebook and one of my friends said, oh, this is like uh, women's health care in our, in our nation. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, sometimes it's fun to do these diversions, the weird stuff, you know? Because I like to experiment with all kinds of different styles. Okay, so this is my, one of my most popular ever photos of Beckman Mill. And it was, it was kind of a fluke because I go out to Beckman Mill in the wintertime all the time and shoot. I love shooting the ice patterns and the ice formations out there. And one day I got this idea. I told my husband, I said, you know, I think if I went out there at night, if, I, if that light is hitting the, the water like that, I think it could make a really cool photo. So he said, and I, and I said, you want to come with me? I didn't want to go out there by myself. So he says, he says but it's cold. <laughs> And I'm like, so? I said, you're coming with me. And so we get in the car, and he comes out there, and he goes, oh, I forgot my boots. I'm like, too bad. I'm getting the shot. So I go out. I, I set up my tripod. I'm not used to taking night pictures. I didn't even know what I was doing. I set up the tripod, started snapping away, and I came home, and I put this on Facebook, and everybody's going, wow. And so I think it's one of Jerry's favorite photos of Beckman Mill. So yeah, that one I sold actually, probably my best selling photo, I've sold several copies. I've made it a, a limited edition, and I still have one framed copy at home yet of Do this one. that much night lighting every night or certain nights? It's every night, yeah. Yeah, and you know, if you really look like this light over here is probably uh, incandescent, where these are probably LEDs because they're brighter and whiter, and this is more of a yellow cast over here. Yeah. Was it actually the, the color was it enhanced? Yeah, I mean, I got it. it, it really did shine off the, the falls like that, you know, and, and it was just one of those times where it was melting a little bit, so you got ac the actual water along with the ice, and there was just so much going on, and I've taken a couple more shots out there now since, since then, at night. Oh, it was probably, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock or something. But you, if you really look close at the picture, you can see the stars. I mean, if you see the actual image. And because it was a 30-second exposure, you, if you look really close, you can see that there's a line, a streak, because the stars have moved that much in 30 seconds. So, yeah. yeah. Now, there was one this week, but it was cloudy, so I couldn't get it. That was last night, wasn't it? Was it really? That was probably the day before it was actually completely full, but yeah. Yeah, I've done. And now I have a new, Marsha, I was going to tell you, I just got a new lens. The, I got the 150 to 600. Wow. So now I can do birds. <laughs> and I want to get, I, when they had the big, the big moon, I was, in a, I was at a convention, a photography convention in Pennsylvania, 
and I couldn't get it, and it was cloudy that night, and I didn't have my big lens. It was like a, it's a monster lens, and I didn't want to carry it with me. So I'm anxious to get more, it's brand new, so I'm anxious to get some more images with that. I'm not used to a, a big, huge lens like that, but I thought, well, it'd be good for um, street photography too, because if you're that far away from somebody, they have no idea that you're shooting them, you know? <laughs> oh, and this is, this is uh, Lake Moraine, which is just down the road from um, Lake Louise in the Canadian Rockies. The Canadian Rockies were absolutely mesmerizing. I loved it up there. I, wanted, I never wanted to come home. We, were up, we took a three-week vacation. We drove all the way up, and it was wonderful. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to take a bad picture in the Canadian Rockies because it's just, everywhere you look, it's just beautiful. This was another one at Beckman Mill. And you can't see it very good, you know, the color, but the pink in the foreground was so awesome. And, and I want, I'm a person that loves winter, so I'll go out at zero degrees and shoot, and it doesn't bother me. And you know, the thing is, they tell you with the cameras, you're not supposed to really shoot in that low a temperature, but I've never had a problem. I'm out there shooting in zero degrees, and my cameras have always been just fine. And, and they say the only thing that, of shooting in low temperatures like that is your batteries will die a little quicker. So you have to make sure that you have a really full battery when you're doing it. And this one I took at one of, when I was, near one of the photo conventions I go to in Niagara, I wanted to shoot the falls at night because I've never seen them at night. So they put the lights on and every so often the lights change. So what I did was I had my tripod. I was the only one there with a tripod. And I set it up and I kept, every time the lights would change, I would take a different picture. So when I got home, I blended them all together and I, used, I erased so I would get the rainbow effect. So that's how I accomplished that. This one, <laughs> I felt like God was rewarding me for having my camera with me because I went out for a walk one day in November and I didn't know if I would have any, an opportunity to take a picture. It was just a walk, just a few, like maybe a quarter of a mile from my home um, on, near the dam in um, Rockton. And I'm walking and I look across and I see this light streaming through the trees and I'm like, oh my gosh. I could visualize what I could do with that in Photoshop. So I had my camera with me. I'm like, great. So I took all these pictures, came home, and did my mojo on magic on it. And I love it. I love how the, it just, the light just dances in that one. And this one, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Jamie Hyden. Jamie is a, a photo artist from La Crosse. And she's quite actually well known. And she's known for making her photos look like paintings. And she uses a lot of textures and a lot of different things. So, this is my rendition of Jamie. And I know Jamie has had some of her work displayed at um, the, the, the frame shop down there in uh, Beloit. What's the name of the frame shop? Yeah, Villager, yeah. I don't know if she has anything now, but she has had stuff down there. And she's in Galena. I see her at work all the time, and, and uh, she's great. So it just has more of an um, old time feel to it. OK, this is. You'll never guess the, this one. This one was the light show at the Rotary Gardens this year. <laughs> That's my rendition. And so I just did a lot of techniques to make it look abstracted. It's the picture of, you know, of, over the water, of the lights in the background. And when I'm up there shooting, my photos don't look like anybody else's. It, oh, this one is, I have another one too I wanted to show you. I don't know if it came up, but um, of the lights, the Christmas lights. This is actually my um, stepfather, my deceased stepfather's flashlight collection. He has over 3,000 flashlights that I've inherited. And he has this rack <laughs> of all these flashlights. And when I put this, this together last night, I had to do them in order. And there were a couple that got out of order, and they're at the end. I'll show them to you. But I'll show you what I put underneath it to bring out the color. But I just thought it was kind of a fun abstract. That's the other one that I do. Because when, when I'm shooting the lights, um, I'm, I have a zoom lens. So as I shoot, I put it on a low shutter speed. And as I shoot, I zoom. And, or I'll take the camera and just move it around. And I get these formations with the lights. It's a lot of fun. And this was taken at the Asian Lights Festival that they had up at the Warner in Milwaukee. I think it was in October they had that. They do that, I think, every year. And this is actually a split image. If you look at it sideways, it's like a dragon. So what I did was I turned it up, and then I put them together 
a split image. Okay, this one it was taken at one of my favorite spots ever to shoot is Old World, Wisconsin. I love that place because the natural light in there is so beautiful and to have them dressed up in their characters, I just love going up there. And um, I would really like to do a book deal with them and do an image, a whole book of my images of, of them. And so I brought this along. I had this one printed and framed. And to me, it does, it looks like an old Dutch painting. So you can come up afterwards and take a look at it closer too. I had it printed on a, on, um, it was a canvas board. So. But no, I've got a couple other ones. Oops, got a couple other ones I want to show you. Let's see. The lighting is just so magnificent up there. I love it. And I actually own a spinning wheel myself, so I love watching the spinners. But the, the way the light is coming through the window and hitting her, and, and I shoot in raw, and that means that I have all the pixels available. So she was lit from the side, but because I can manipulate it in Photoshop, I was able to bring her skin tone out, but yet she has all this beautiful halo of light around her. And that one actually, I did win a second place award on that one. And that one was shown at BAC too. That one I think sold, I think that one sold at BAC. Okay, this one, I'm gonna show you the, this is what the before looks like. So, <laughs> after I do all of my magic on it, that's how what I ended up with. So, yeah. Okay, see these are some odd ones that were that I that I didn't get in the, the draw. And so this the one I showed you of the flashlights, mm -hmm. I put this behind it. And this was taken at um, there's a garden in Madison that has lilacs. And I think it's affiliated with this with the University of Wisconsin. And one year they had this like curtain of all these water bottles that were crushed with all these different colors of water in them. And so I was like, wow, and I did some really cool abstract, my zoom on them too. And so I used that. I thought it made a great, just, to, just the way it is, it makes a great abstract. But then to do the zoom and stuff too, it really was a neat. So I use it for color, a pop of color. Sometimes if I want color behind my photos, I'll put that in. And this was, um, I was in Galena and I was, they have all these beautiful shops and there was this glass bowl that was beautiful and I, took a few shots of it, and then I took a lot of the different shots and put them all together. So just, I thought it kind of, it, it turned into a nice abstract that way. And that one is the Rotary Garden in the spring. I just loved all the color in there. And every once in a while when I'm up there, I see Dr. Yar and I'll talk to him because I spend so much time up there. So this was another one that didn't get, I, I would have had it uh, earlier, but see, I put her in, in a, um, Iris. Do you pay special fees to be able to be photographed on these gardens? No, no, because I don't do portraits. So I'm not, I don't bring in all this equipment and have people posing and doing all that stuff. I'm just like discreet. I just take my, I have a little tiny black card that's only this, about this big that I hold behind the, the flower and I don't have tripods. I, sometimes I'll bring a tripod, it's very rare. Um, and I'm not getting in people's way that they can trip over stuff, and that's where. Are you like managing gardens or? Are you no. Um, I haven't been to La Paloma. I want to go there. I want to talk to him about it because I would like to maybe teach a class there, and then that way they could get the money from it, you know. So I want to contact them, but no. Um, but they, it's because I don't do formal portraiture, then you know. And besides, when I, when I um, win in the International Garden of the Flower Award, then I put their name on there and it gets published worldwide. So why would they not want me to take photos if they're getting international recognition, you know? Oh, well, I guess that's it. Well, you did say that it's part of the Cultural Society. Yeah, well, the, yeah, that's part of my fee for getting. And it's great because, like, you know, at at um, the Chicago Botanic Garden, which is like one of the primo gardens in the U.S., um, they, it's like $30 to park. 
and then you have to get in line. And so the last time I was there, they have like a little booth that you go to when you're, you know, when you have to pay and this one for members. So I go to the one of members, there's no line, I just get right in and it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, I'd like to contact them too about doing some uh, possible um, classes there. I do know that the, their staff photographer did win a small prize in the International Garden Photographer of the Year last year, but she didn't make it this year, so I don't know if that's our only photo that she's ever got in. I just haven't contacted them yet. They, yeah, they, th I've talked to them about that and they don't even want me taking pictures there. I told them, I said, I have all these awards in the International Garden. They're like, they don't care. They go, well, then everybody's going to want it. And I'm like, but they don't have the credentials I do. They don't care. So I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, but I, one of the, the first award that I won in the International Garden Photographer was taken at Nicholas Conservatory in Rockford. And when I won that award, I wrote up a, a press release and sent it to the paper, and they didn't print it. And I thought, I'm giving you some positive news, and you don't want to print that, you only want to print the negative stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's cindy.photography. But I have cards, you know, I have cards too today I can pass out if anybody wants one. So um, I'm trying to think of anything else that, oh, so, so right now my goal this year is to um, start putting some garden photography workshops at various gardens around the U.S. So I have a business consultant that's working up writing my pitch letter right now, and we're going to start trying to get some on the schedule. And I know that in Longwood, I talked to them last year, and they said that if I contact them in March, that's when they're putting the schedule together for the following year. So hopefully I'll get in there, and um, I'll just travel wherever, you know, wherever I can find a garden that wants to have me. So This is your job. Can I ask what you sell a picture like that for or that? Um, Oh, the metal prints are quite expensive to make, so I, I would probably sell this one for between 150 and 200 maybe. That's what they would go for in Galena. The one that I sold in Galena was metal. The, one I, the, the first one I showed you, the, the parrot tulip. That one was bigger than this, and that one I sold for $500. This one I'd probably sell for 300 maybe. Um, the frame and finish like that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I haven't checked the, the prices lately. I know that um, this was, I did this one probably two years ago. Um, and actually this one, I'm gonna have to sell at a discount anyway because it has this very tiny little mark and it just happened to get, get that because I have so many pictures and they bump against each other. So I was thinking about, I have that, that the one of the girl in the boat, I have to get printed, it's gonna come in today. Oh, I lost this. It's going to come in today, and I, when I take it to the, the guy that, to frame it, because I want it professionally framed, um, I'm going to ask him if there's a place that does restoration, because I want to make sure that if I can get that fixed, I want to fix it. But it's, it's very minor. I probably could just take a, a marker or something to it, but I just don't feel right about selling it for an expensive price if it's not perfect. So I might order another print like this one, same thing. But yeah, that's one of my favorites. So I wanted to bring it to show, because most of the pictures, otherwise, I was, a, I was trained in, in, in how to do framing, so I have like the mat cutter and stuff myself, so when I frame them myself, it, I actually save a lot of money, and I can make more money off of them, but like with New York City, it was too important to me to not do it perfect. So I had a, a, a fine art print done, and then I'm taking it to a place in Rockford, and they're gonna frame it professionally for me, so I'm gonna send it, yeah. Okay, it's, it's called Photoshop Artistry or something. The, the guy that runs it, his name is Sebastian Michaels. So if you look up Sebastian Michaels, you'll find it. Um, I believe it's called Photoshop Artistry, if I'm not mistaken. He's had it, Photoshop Grunge was, was it for a while, but now he's changed it. And then he has this full long course, uh, a year long course that he, he um, offers his advanced students, and that's called Awake. But, but you have to take the initial course first before you can get into that one. And so I've done two or three different ones of his now. And I actually got to meet him last, last fall. I was in, uh, he's in Asheville, North Carolina. And we got to meet and have coffee. It was awesome because he's very reclusive and so he, doesn't, he hasn't met too many of his students. So I always felt so fortunate to actually meet him. 
and then I got to go to the Biltmore Estate and their rose garden was beautiful there too so I got a lot of great shots and they had they had a Chihuly exhibit while I was there so that was fun that was fun to see too so um, if you, would you recommend uh, doing a class like this rather than just messing around yourself yeah I would yeah. because he has it all structured so well and I was initially I really didn't want to take a class online because I know that I have trouble focusing and if I'm not in a natural classroom, I just thought, you know, I might never complete it, you know, and I just, but I thought, I need to do this, I need to just bite the bullet and just do it. So I had to force myself to really be committed enough to learn it. So I had to really force myself to sit there and just watch the videos and keep, and you know, you never can become a master at Photoshop because there's so much to learn. It's just like, it's never ending. But it's perfect for me because I'm always jumping around from thing to thing to thing all the time and I like to keep everything fresh and do different things and experiment and I think that's probably why I've gotten as far as I have because I, I'm willing to step outside the bounds and try things, you know, and, and I just keep going, so, yeah. I have the full Photoshop and I, and I have the, the monthly. It's uh, $10 a month I pay and then they give you free updates whenever they come up with a free update, you know. I got it when I was in college, and it was only like $100 or something because I got the student discount. But once I got that, and then if you've been, if you've owned Photoshop in the past, you can get the $10. But if you have never owned Photoshop before, maybe Elements would qualify, though. Then they will give you the $10 a month. But I don't know if it's what the other fees are. I don't, I'd have to go into Adobe.com, and then they can find out what they have. I, I get those at Bay Photo also, same place that does this. Yeah, because they have such a wide selection of different things. They, they, they print on wood, they print on anything. It's amazing. They have such a, such a great selection. And um, you can just do it all online and you just hit send and then two days later you get your print. So it's, it works out really well. Yeah. What do you use for um, um, organizing your files? Um, most people will use Lightroom. And I don't normally use it. I use Bridge, which is part of the whole CC the, of, that comes with Photoshop. And it's just um, when I upload my pictures, it automatically takes it into Bridge. And then they're all there, and I organize it that way. But I have a weird, because I'm so scatterbrained, I have a weird way of organizing my, my, my photos. I drive my husband crazy. But he takes care of the taxes every year because he has a degree in, in accounting. So. Uh, every year he's always telling me to get on it and get all of my, where all the places I've been all year and, and calculate my mileage. So, so I will go through the whole year, every, every place I've been to calculate my mileage and where I was at. So I have lists. So I have, so I have an actually a hard copy of everywhere I've been the last five years. So if I'm like, oh yeah, I took a picture of this and, and where was that? So I'll go back to my list and look at them. <laughs> it's just, it's just the scatterbrain in me that does weird stuff like that. Uh, courses here locally, like at a Bull Tech or at U Rock or at, at um, Rockford, do you teach? No, I, I've taught, the only thing I've taught so far is I did teach a little um, Photoshop class at Nature at the Confluence, and there was some people from the Rockford Photo Club that wanted me to teach some of my Photoshop techniques to them, and it was mostly older folks. And I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it that much, um, and it, Maybe it was just because of, I don't know, they, they, a lot of them used elements and they weren't really familiar with, you know, Photoshop. And so it was slower and I really had to slow down my pace and, and it was just, you know, it was so different for me. But then I took, I, I taught my first class at Doug's Garden last year and that was more fun. I enjoyed that. So that's why I'm thinking I want to get, expand into doing more gardens this year and teaching, basically teaching how I shoot against black how I do the soft ethereal things, because I have special lenses for that. But also, in, in, to keep myself ahead of the game, I'm taking classes right now on how to create iPad art. So, because most people have cell phones. They don't have fancy $2,000 cameras like I have, you know. Most people, so if I want to have a, bit, a bigger market share, I'm going to have to cater to the people that have the cell phones. So, there's classes on how to t make, um, beautiful artworks like some of the stuff I do actually you know with the layers and things like that and the textures on the iPad 
I even have the iPad pencil, so I have some catching up to do. I want to get dive into some of those courses. I just have too many things on my plate. <laughs> Where do you store? Oh, I actually have a professional storage place. It's called um, Crash Plan, and it's um, it's for businesses, and they have unlimited storage, which is perfect for me because I have all kinds of um, hard drives. I have like four, six terabyte hard drives. I have a three, a two, and a four, and just massive because because raw photos are huge file sizes so you need to have that and so the nice thing about it is is I think it's ten dollars a month I pay to get this cloud storage for unlimited and and as soon as they rec as soon as I upload my pictures it will recognize the file extension and it automatically starts saving them so I don't have to think about it so as soon as I start Anything I upload, it starts getting saved into my cloud storage. So, so if anything would happen if my house would burn down, I would still have my photos. So it's really important because there's been so many people I've talked to about horror stories that where they, things crash and they lose everything. And it's happened to me too. So once you get bit once, you don't do it again. So now I'm really, really careful about what it. What kind of computer do you use? I have, um, I have a Mac, a large with big screen, you know, an iMac. And well, they told me in fact, in, when I was in school at Rockford College, they said all artists use Macs. And I'm like, okay, so I'll get a Mac. So I got the Mac, and so now my husband uses my old Mac. I just got a new one a couple years ago. But then I bought the, just the 13 inch MacBook because I wanted to be able to edit on the road. Before I would go on these beautiful vacations and I couldn't edit a photo until I got home, and so I wanted to get a MacBook. And so now it's great because if I take it, you know, when I'm speaking or things like that too. So. Um, I, and I'm also speaking at a garden show. They put on a big garden show in Rockford at Forest Hills the first weekend, I believe, in April. I'm going to be speaking on April 7th at 1 o'clock at Forest Hills, and I'm going to do just a mini little half-hour thing, of, and I'm going to be bringing my black card and some of the equipment that I use and just do a brief overview of the photography that I do. Oh, and the other thing is, the reason I found out about that is because I recently became a master gardener. So they have it online now, and I did it through, because I live in Illinois, so I did it through the Winnebago County Extension, and they give you three months to complete the online training. I did it in eight days. <laughs> but now I have, to do my, um, I have to do my volunteer work. So I have to put in, six, in the ne over the next two years, I have to do 60 hours of volunteer work. So I think when I do the, the little s workshop, that's gonna count towards my hours that I'm gonna be doing for that, so. But I did that because I thought it would make me more marketable when I, when I talk to gardens, because if I not, because a lot of people that take pictures of flowers, they don't know the names of them. So I wanted to know, dive in and know everything I could about the flowers themselves, so I could be a better teacher when I do teach, you know, so. And I will, I am, like I said, I'm working on getting my schedule together for this year once the flowers start blooming again, and I know I'm going to be up at Doug's more than once, because he's such a nice guy. He lets me come up anytime I want to teach a class. So, and I usually limit, to, limit it to about six, because that way I can give everybody more attention. So make a right around six at a time. And, and I also give discounts for people that are willing to write uh, a testimonial. So if you like my, my class and you want to write a testimonial that'll help me on my website when I'm trying to get into bigger gardens to, to do my workshops. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.